Good morning, guys. Jen here. So this is the beginning of a tentative new series. Um, this is going to be Word of the Week. I will try to do these on Sunday, the um, original calendar, but if I get to it on Monday, uh, that's not too big of a deal because that's the beginning of the work week for a lot of people. So in a minute trial, I'll attempt to go in alphabetical order. Now this I found very interesting when I was um, doing my Bible studies uh, for the channel the first time. And so the idea is to go over a word a week. So we are learning different ways in which language has been changed and altered and how this keeps the generation gap going uh, between uh, fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters, how we're not able to effectively communicate because we're all, all using different definitions of words. And so hopefully this will help you um, help us all with a fuller understanding so that we can grasp what's happening in our reality. And, um, you know, when we read the news, and I always say now it is most important to watch the numbers that they use and watch what is not said. So the first one is apostate. Um, the Bible verse goes, you know, in the end days, many will fall away. Um, and this is called apostasy when they fall away from the faith. So this is mid-century, 14th century, one who forsakes his religion or faith from the old French apostate and directly from late Latin apostata, apostata, which form also was used in English from Greek apostasia. Now, let's hold please for a moment. The New Testament, a lot of people are, are mistransliterating things because they're going back to the Hebrew in the New Testament, but the New Testament was written in um, Greek and Latin, so it's best to, to go back to the Greek and then go back to the Latin, and that is the basis for the English language as well, although our sentence are st sentences are structured backwards. Our verbs, nouns, and adjectives are reversed from how they are um, everywhere else in the world. Latin is the basis for our language, especially uh, medical and scientific terminology. And again, you'll find it um, originated in the Bible. So those who are trying to tear the Bible down, whether you have faith or not, you're tearing down um, many years of society because that's what our society is built upon. That's where we um, outlined some moral values that, uh, you know, some of us could agree on, at least in the New Testament. So it means defection, desertion, rebellion from apostenai to defect, literally to stand off. And that's what it says to fall away from, right? And in, in the test, uh, New Testament, it's called um, many will be cut off, many shall fall away. And here it gives you a couple more definitions. This is the etymology tool. I really like it. Um, to get the full definition of a word and how it's changed over the centuries, though, y you want to use proper research, okay, and, and use credible websites and, you know, dig deep. But for beginning your search and, and for just be having a well-rounded vocabulary and becoming articulate, this is a nice little tool. And it explains that the um, prefix apo was before vowels, ap, word forming element, meaning of, from, away from, separate from, or free from, okay? Apostate is a disloyal person who betrays or deserts his cause or religion. Now, why is this so interesting to me? Well, I had found this paper in the beginning of all this, but first let's go and look at the medical terminology. Um... Apoptosis. <laughs> They're trying to go okay, here. Apoptosis. Apoptosis. Um, a natural process of cell destruction by degradative enzymes in certain cells. Now, if we go down here a little bit, let's. And again, you have the extra P here, but it's derived from the same word. And it says C20 from Greek, a falling away from. So you know it's it's the same root word. So in biology, it's a noun. It is the programmed death of some of an organism's cell as part of its natural growth and development. Um, so apostasy, apost, apopostis, is also a cell death. But it's a programmed cell death, which I found fascinating. 
Um, I believe this is the journal that I found that we first started looking at um, in the channel's first incarnation. Uh, this is an abstract. It's a very interesting article. The process of program cell death or apo apoptosis is generally characterized by distinct morphological characteristics and energy-dependent biochemical mechanisms. Apoptosis is considered a vital component of various processes, including normal cell turnover, proper development and functioning of the immune system, hormone-dependent atrophy, embryonic development, and chemical-induced cell death. Inappropriate ap apoptosis, either too little or too much, uh, much like the leaven in the bread or the salt of the earth, which the Bible talks about, is a factor in many human conditions, including neurodegenerative diseases, ischemic, which is interesting because we're in like this schismatic period right now, damage, autoimmune disorders, and many types of cancer. Okay. Oh. And then here you have the um, Italian definition or the Italian, how the, you know, word grew, how the term grew. And it says, and they will either enter into this so-called cellular suicide program to cell death, or they will form unhealthy daughter cells and enter into apoptosis once they have divided. Okay. Um, so again, it is, it is derived from the same word. It is pretty much the same word, just in a different language. Um, you know, in the original Latin and Greek, but it is a very interesting study if you look into it. And if you're interested in this, um, I can go back and find the actual link or the article which we looked at the first time, which talked about, um, let me see how to how to phrase this properly, about current events and the situation we've been facing now since 2019. Um, there is a paper on that and about um, protein cells and um, how that affects, how the protein affects the um, apoptosis or the apostate cells. And remember, it's a program death date, basically, which is also talked about on this show, um, Manifest. So we're seeing all these links and all these ties. And, you know, I'm someone who reads a lot of different religious or faith-driven books I'm getting a little bit into um, the Egyptian Egyptology now because I want to understand their thinking and what we're facing today, know thy enemy and all that. But again, I'm also not someone who screams demon just because somebody practices a different faith. I think we should all have that freedom. If it's a freedom I want, then it's something I want others to have too, as long as no harm is being done to, um, you know, to, to people or to, to animals in the environment. But regardless, um, if this is something you are interested in, we will dig into it a little deeper. But this is the word of the re week, apostate. And remember, um, when somebody else is, is speaking, they are using different definitions than you are. So let's be clear. Let's have patience with each other when we're communicating and not make uh, preconceived notions or assumptions about where somebody is coming from. And, you know, just ask them. <laughs> But this word is probably going to come up more, so you might want to um, familiarize yourself with it. And coming up next, um, I found a few cool books we're going to look at, a few uh, ancient texts or allegedly ancient texts, a cool ARG from uh, some internet mysteries that I also believe, um, like the Mandela Effect, I believe uh, our help, our angels here, whatever you want to call them, is trying to communicate with us. But are we listening? So watch for all that. Um, hopefully we'll have a good time and I hope you guys um, interact in the comment section. We had a great group of people the first time around uh, and just had to shake few, loose a few trolls. <laughs> you guys have a great day. God bless you and um, we'll talk soon. Bye.